Welcome to this week's Message of Hope broadcast. Many times throughout our lives, we are faced with situations, with things that we don't know what the answers are to. We don't know which way to turn, what to do. And yes doesn't seem the right answer, and no doesn't seem the right answer. And there's a time that we have to, we have to have what we call the shelf. And you build a shelf, and the things that you don't know what to do or how to do it, you put on that shelf for later. Because what happens is if we, if we decide yes or no ahead of time, and we don't allow that, um, that space, for God to work things out in our lives, sometimes we we'll make a decision not to do something and then it would have been the right decision to actually do it. Or the other way around, we might decide to do something and the right decision might have been not to do it. And so, when we have that shelf, we have to just put things on the shelf and allow God to work it out until it becomes clear what it is. Now, Excuse me. Having said that, we want to make sure that we don't use that as an excuse not to do what we know God is asking us to do. That's not what the shelf is for. The shelf is for those things that we're not quite sure how it's going to work out or what to do or whatever that might look like. I know a lot of things in my life, things in the past where I thought I knew the right answers, Right now, I'm, I'm having to take a bunch of stuff off of the yes and no pow and put it on the shelf because I'm learning that there's more dynamics to most of the complex problems have multi-layered answers. And once we think we know something, then it seems like something comes along that kind of puts a wrench in that thought pattern. So... It's amazing how as we go deeper and as we, as we broaden and as we advance, some of the things that seem to be a positive yes or a positive no, there seems to be a lot more dynamics that come in there because we can't even just look at something and decide yes or no in somebody's life because we don't even know where they're coming from and where they're headed. And we have noticed that, you know, on a, on a map, we don't know which way to go if we don't know where our starting point is or where we come from or where we want to go to. Sometimes we're trying to help people come to a certain point and they don't want to go to that point. They want to go to another point. So we're starting to learn that we need to find out where people want to go before we start helping them there before we give them directions. And we also have to know where they came from before we can give them directions. We've actually had it where we were giving people directions and where to go, where we thought they wanted to go, where they were actually even saying they want to go, but then we figured out that they did not want to go where they said they wanted to go. It was too hard. It was too, too much, too fast, too whatever it was. And they wanted to go the long way around instead of taking the shortcut because you know sometimes the shortcut is the bumpy road sometimes the shortcut is the one that goes up over the steep mountain and down the other side the long way around might be 20 miles farther and you go but if you have a vehicle around. if you have a vehicle and you go the long way and it's smoother roads you can you can get there quicker than some of the shortcuts too so we're not saying that all shortcuts have to be taken. And some of the shortcuts are, are different than other shortcuts. Yeah. But when we don't understand something and we only have a yes or no response, then we, it forces us to say no to anything that we don't understand or, or that we don't um, fully comprehend. We don't have options. And it, I believe that's exactly why a lot of people are having a hard time um, experiencing new things with God. 
because they only have a yes or no option and since they can't quite say yes they have to say no you can't put it on the shelf or anything like that um, but if we build a shelf then we might say you know I really don't know yes or no yet but I'm willing to wait and see what God shows me and it's amazing how many times that God will then bring some other dynamics into the picture that suddenly everything makes sense from before where before when those uh, couple pieces were missing it didn't make sense one, one of the situations in my life has been when I was about 16 to 18 I pretty much knew everything or I thought I did but now I realize that I didn't know everything I know, now, I know more now than I did then and I think I, it feels like I know less so uh, that's one of the pitfalls that uh, I think everybody goes through in life so what are you saying? What I'm saying is that some of the things I thought I knew when I was 16 to 18 or even 20, 19, 20, I had to take off the, the yes or no where I thought I knew it and put it on the shelf. Because it wasn't quite the way you thought. Yeah. You know, it's actually impossible to eat a chicken leg if it's only yes or no. Because if it's only yes, you would have to eat the bones and everything. And if it's only no, you couldn't start because there's bones in there, right? But if you have the option of eating the meat and throwing away the bones, you can actually relate to anybody. You, you don't have to figure out if those people are exactly, believe exactly the way you believe. You don't, they don't have to go to the same church you go to. They don't have to have the same color skin or the same belief systems or the same mode of transportation or whatever it may be if you understand the concept of eating the meat and throwing away the bones. Because you agree with with them wherever you agree with them and the rest of the things you just put on that either put it on the shelf or you put it in the no bin and you move on from there. But it doesn't mean that that we have to isolate from everybody either. But when we're talking about a shelf, we're not talking about blocking it off. We're talking about building a shelf that is before the Lord. If we just kind of try to push it back and never think about it, then it's, it's not on a shelf. <coughs> it's blocked off or trying to be blocked off. If we have a shelf, it gives us the ability to listen to people without judging them without having to decide everything whether we agree or disagree with them at the moment but to actually listen to what they're saying and what they mean and then take it from there whatever parts we agree with then we can put on the yes option whatever parts we don't agree with we can put in the no option and the rest of it we put on that shelf to to um, see which which way it's going to turn out for further discernment. There's a lot of there's a lot of things in this life that I believe God gives some people one part of it and other people another part of it, and He wants them to come together and and discuss and discern together so that they get a a bigger viewpoint, a bigger picture. Using the shelf is an ongoing process of putting things on the shelf and taking them off of the shelf. Sometimes you see that, okay, so now I can take this off the shelf and put it over here, but now I've got to take this other thing that I had over here and put that on the shelf because that doesn't quite line up now. So... For instance, some of the things that we had in the yes option for a number of years, we may later find out that it needs further discernment because of some new information that we found out. But see, if you don't have that shelf and if you want to just stand on 
certain information, new information is actually a threat. New information is a threat to your belief system. If you believe you already know and you can't, you can't uh, receive anything new or different. Did you know that if two people disagree on something, it means that one person has different information, more information than the other person? More or less, yeah. So, that's why it's important that if we think we disagree on something to, to elaborate or talk more because somewhere it's going <coughs> to it's going to come out where somebody has more or less or wrong information or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes people don't want to go to those parts and actually talk. Mm -hmm. Because it can get uncomfortable. It can get uncomfortable if we think that we know something and we don't want to let it go and we don't want to be open to other options. I'm talking out of experience because I have to take things off my shelf every once in a while and put other things on. So. Do you have any experience that you can share with us? I don't know. I don't know if I can share it or not. I know that uh, w one of the biggest weaknesses I have is, is judgment. And one of the ways to overcome judgments is to put things on the shelf that shouldn't be on the yes or no bin. How would that help? If you take the judgments off, how does that help to <coughs> to do that? Well, yes or no is a judgment. If we decide yes, it's a judgment. If we decide no, it's a judgment. And not all judgments are wrong. But if we're not sure and we decide it's yes or decide it's no, then it can be a judgment that is wrong, which will be a problem in our life and in other people's lives around us. So let's talk about judgments. What are judgments? Judgment is a personal belief or decision that is not founded on proof or certainty. It is the act of comparing a person's situation or event. It is an act of disapproval or condemnation. Judgments are comparisons comparing one thing to another instead of evaluating everything with the cross of Jesus Christ and the way God sees things. Now, many times people can say, well, you know, according to that, then I'm, I'm, I'm actually not really judging because I'm just, I'm just doing what the Bible says. But three people or ten people can read the Bible and get different things out of it according to the way that they preconceive what the Bible should mean. I saw a, an interesting picture the other day. I was going to keep it. I don't remember if I kept it or not then. Of um, uh, it had the the Bible verse Matthew seven judge not that you be not judged, and it it just had the first two words judge not circled, and then everything else crossed off. Because a lot of people want to say, don't judge, don't judge, don't judge, but they don't go with what the rest of it says, and so it actually comes to the place where somebody is living in sin. And if anybody even wants to mention anything about the sin, they want to say, well, you're judging me. You're judging me. But what they miss is that the Bible says that somebody like that is already judged. It's, it's a part of righteousness. But it does say, judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. 
And so we have found that if we feel like judgments are coming against us, then it's actually better to find out uh, where have I judged other people and to repent for that. Because when we repent for where we have judged other people, it breaks the power of those judgments in the spirit realm and there's nothing for it to latch on to when other people want to judge us. <clears throat> Many people are judged with the judgments that they judge others with and then they wonder why life is treating them unfairly. These judgments keep them in bondage to their own, to their own declarations. And we found that quite a bit already, actually, when we were working with people, is that they were bound by their own judgments. They, they could not move on. It was almost like they had tied themselves up um, by the judgments that they had made against other people. So I recommend that we all look at our lives and, and find out where are we judging people. And instead of judging them... Um, we can, when we quit judging them, um, we give them the benefit of the doubt. Which means that, okay, I see this happening, but I really don't know what is going on or why they did this. And actually talk to them and find out why do you do what you do instead of just judging and, and um, condemning. We can quit judging others by evaluating every situation with the truth. When we cast judgment, we're basing our opinion on something, on what something appears to be, instead of actually talking to them and finding out what is it actually. When, when we evaluate, we take time to gather facts and find the heart of the matter. John 7.24 says, Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So now it sounds like Jesus is completely contradicting himself. First he says, Judge not so that you not be judged, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. Now here, it says, Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Now he's telling us to judge. <coughs> so what does that mean? I don't know if it's the same Greek word or not, but uh, to me it's to me it sounds like he's in Matthew five he's giving us instructions how to keep judgments from coming on us, and John seven twenty four where he says judge not according to appearance but judge righteous judgment, he is saying don't just let everything go either but find out. Don't don't judge by what it looks don't like. Don't just accept anything. But. Judge righteous judgment means in a, in a courtroom the judge finds out from the, both parties what, what's going on. Because sometimes we can get on a situation and judge something just by looking at it. But we don't know what, why it led up to this. Mm -hmm. So if, if anybody here would like to pray with us, let's, uh, let's pray a prayer uh, breaking judgments in our lives. Lord, Lord, I take responsibility. I take responsibility and repent. And repent for all judgments. For all judgments and comparisons. And comparisons. And I ask that you would remove them from my life. And I ask that you would remove them from our life. Lord, your word says. Lord, your word says that those that compare themselves. That those that compare themselves among themselves among themselves are not wise. Are not wise. I ask for wisdom. I ask for wisdom to be released into my life. To be released into my life. Lord, please help me. Lord, please help me to remember. To remember 
to evaluate, evaluate the situation. To evaluate the situation. Instead of judging. Instead of judging. I choose to find. I choose to find the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter. And gather facts. And gather facts. Instead of comparing. Instead of comparing. And casting judgment. And casting judgments. Lord, I now take authority. Lord, I now take authority over all accusations. Over all accusations. Condemnations. Condemnations. Nations, insinuations, insinuations, and judgments, and judgments. I bring them to you. I bring them to you, and ask that you would apply, and ask that you would apply the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, to destroy all these curses, to destroy all these curses. Lord, your word says. Lord, your word says to bless those that curse me. To bless those that curse me. So I ask that you would send blessings. So I ask that you would send blessings to, uh, to wherever these curses are coming from. To wherever these curses are coming from. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And it's good to pray uh, those prayers. Um, the, the accusation, condemnation, insinuation, and judgments. That prayer. We actually at one point prayed that prayer every day for at least three weeks we were praying it every day because it was just a, it was like there was a whole bunch of stuff coming against us and rumors and stuff like that it was just stuff was all stirred up in the spirit realm and and uh, so we started praying that every day and it really made a big difference it it really um, in a in a few days time we could tell that there was uh, a difference and in three weeks time it really cleared up the spiritual atmosphere around us and then we didn't do it every day from that day forth but we still need to do it sometimes just to just to keep the accusations and the judgments and stuff that want to come against us or even that we uh, may uh, be judging other people we try to remember not to do that but even when you try to remember not to do it, it can, ac it can accidentally happen um, in ways that we don't even think about. Because actually in the culture that we grew up in, it was uh, actually a part of life to judge. It's a part of life to judge. And uh, you, you did it without thinking about it. It was, a, it was a normal thing, actually. And so that's one of the things that we really had to battle against and to repent of to to break that off and I believe that it's a, a very necessary key in overcoming that uh, we don't allow the enemy to just keep putting that stuff on us but that we keep breaking it off and another important key to remember is that everybody has an opinion everybody's entitled to opinion God wants us to have an opinion and it is not judging by giving an opinion. It is judging when we declare this is so. This is how it is. We can give an opinion if it's completely wrong. And say this is what I see or this is my opinion or this is what I'm getting at the moment or you know this is what I believe. We can, we can bring it out in, in such a way that, that it can be discussed that's open for discussion without being a judgment. And everybody can have an opinion. Everybody needs to have an opinion. Otherwise we just go through life like yes men or like uh, robots that are just mechanically controlled by somebody else. We hope you enjoyed this week's Message of Hope broadcast. If you have questions that you want discussed on a future broadcast, you can email them to asksteveandjake at yahoo.com. Thank you for watching. God bless you and enjoy the journey.